G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy and Just The Tips. I'm obviously doing this a little bit early this week. I will be on a plane by the time the round finishes and therefore unable to do Just The Tips. So I had a decision, do I not do it at all or do I just simply try and do it early? I've decided on the latter. So elephant in the room, there's three games left to go in round 10. We've got Essendon and North, we've got West Coast and Melbourne, we've got Port and Hawthorne. As it currently stands, I've got four out of six correct tips. I've got Geelong wrong. I really didn't see that coming. I really didn't see Gold Coast winning that game by 64 points coming. Wow, that was outstanding. Um, So then I got Sydney and Collingwood right. I did correctly predict that Collingwood and Adelaide would be an absolute ripper, and it was. GWS were very disappointing against the Bulldogs, and I'm disappointed that they got my tip wrong, and I blame them, not me. Brisbane beating Richmond was always going to happen, I'm afraid, Uh, and Fremantle were too good for St Kilda, so I got that right. So there's three games left, and I've tipped the favourites. Then I feel confident about them. But sillier things have happened than one of those games being an upset this week. So unfortunately, with doing this early, it means that I can't shout out all the weekly winners. So I'll try and do that once again when I'm back from my trip. I do have videos scheduled. I just won't be able to cover the game as I'm going. I'm not taking any of my camera stuff with me. Cool. So we'll crack back into Squiggle for round 11. Now, obviously, there's still three games to go. And I'll just punch in the things that I, I think will happen. Obviously, I could be wrong. However... Let's just say Essendon beats North by six goals. Let's say that Port are too good for Hawthorne by 40 points. And I'll say that Melbourne should be well and truly too good for West Coast by 40 points. I really hope none of those are wrong. Anyway, well, actually, I do hope the Eagles one is wrong. It's time to crack into round 11. So the Bulldogs playing Sydney now. Again, this looks a lot juicier than it did a couple of weeks back because the Bulldogs have put together, well, two good performances, once against a depleted Richmond, but then beating a very lackluster GWS in Sydney is impressive. They played really well. They kicked eight goals, 22. Could have kicked, you know, a lot more goals, obviously, and won that game even more heavily. And, uh, you know, they, they've been solid this year. I mean, that, that loss to Hawthorne does look like an outlier now. Nonetheless, this is a really big challenge against the Swans, who are the number one team in the competition across so many different metrics. I know I'm repeating myself there, but, like, scores from stoppages, scores from turnovers, score from the back half. The individual players are, are absolutely firing. They beat Carlton by something like eight goals last week. This is going to be a really tough game, but I have a feeling it's going to be close. So I have a look at the head-to-head on finalsiren.com, and you can see that the last two times these guys played at Marvel Stadium was in 22 and 21. Uh, They traded wins. Funnily enough, the team that finished high that year lost the game. The team that played in the grand final that year in both of those years lost the game. I think the Dogs will actually give them a real shake. Uh, I don't think Sydney will win by much, but they will win. They will win, in my opinion, and win this game by 14 points. Fremantle take on Collingwood at Optus Stadium. This is a big test for them. They fell well short against Sydney, albeit with some extenuating circumstances. Nonetheless, I don't think Fremantle have played anywhere near as well as how well Collingwood are playing at the moment. So this will be a stern test. However, with a home crowd, you never know. At Fremantle home games, they do seem to grow a leg. So... Fremantle coming off a 17-point win against St. Kilda, very dour affair, as we expected. Two defensively-minded sides. They got the job done, as I predicted. Collingwood overcame a fast-finishing Crows side that has put together a very good five to six weeks in general, the Crows. So the fact that they always produce close games, those two teams, makes me not mark against Collingwood the fact that the Crows got so close to them, right? And to go back in the side now, I think they're holding up pretty well considering a few injuries. I don't think off the stadium and traveling, you know, obviously the, the conversation at the moment happening around how much Collingwood actually travels, but I don't think they're actually bad on the road in Perth in particular. So I'd imagine Collingwood win this game. I'll be surprised if they don't. I'll say 25 points, uh, but you never know. I'll give Freo a chance, but I'm pretty confident in Collingwood for this one. North versus Port Adelaide at Bell Reeve. Now, Tassie can be an interesting variable for traveling teams. There was a pun- once upon a time in North Melbourne, were really hard to beat down there, even if their team wasn't performing that strongly. However, we are removed from that now because North Melbourne, obviously, haven't won a whole lot of games in the last three years. And so again, I looked at the head-to-head here to see if North Melbourne have a chance against Port Adelaide. But then I look at the last two times Port Adelaide played them in the last two seasons when North were bottom two, and there were heavy Port Adelaide wins. So they don't hold any fears. Now, I can't really read into form. Neither of these two sides have played last week. However, Port Adelaide's last win before that was Geelong at GMHBA. And North Melbourne are still winless as it currently stands, unless they've beaten Essendon. And even if they've beaten Essendon, I don't think I would tip them in this game. So I'm going to say Port Adelaide win this by 45 points. Carlton versus Gold Coast shapes out to be a pretty good game. And actually, if you look at the ladder there, Gold Coast is higher than Carlton on the ladder. I think Carlton have had a uh, tough run of fixtures. Like their last loss, obviously, was against the Swans. 
um, and they lost pretty heavily. That being said, this is at home. This is at Marvel Stadium. Now, Gold Coast coming off an 11 goal win against Geelong. I'm still very impressed by that. You know, a lot of their young talent fired in that game. Everyone sort of got a piece of the pie, their highest ever score. Confidence should be high. That was the first game we saw Gold Coast beat someone rated higher than themselves, in my opinion, this year. So that was a big step and a big sign of legitimacy and showing some momentum. Do they take that into this game and play a Carlton side that I think is better on paper? Maybe not more talented. Gold Coast is very talented, but Carlton's like primary players, the guys who are gonna win this game are more or less in their prime and likely to be more consistent, or at least in theory, right? So I, that's why I rate Carlton higher, even though they're lower. Gold Coast are not bad at Marvel Stadium either. I think they beat Richmond there last year. I think they last beat Carlton there in 2021. I think this is winnable for Gold Coast. I'm going to go conservative here and tip the home side. Carlton really can't afford to lose too many games like this. I mean, to be 6-4, and four, I think they're better than that. Personal opinion. Their losses have been against some good teams and an Adelaide side that is now playing well. So they should win this. It would be, it'd be a problem for them if they don't. If they slip to 6-5, and five, I think that would be very, very disappointing. In addition to the fact that they would be outside the 8. So Carlton by 17 points. But I think this is winnable. For the Suns, that is. Geelong versus GWS at GMHBA. Wow. God, two out-of-form sides, right? Geelong has lost three in the bounce after winning their first seven and were touched up by the Gold Coast Suns and in particular in the midfield, the engine room, Gold Coast really got a hold of them and that's a bit of a weakness for the Cats this year with some injuries, of course. The Giants look rubbish at the moment and um, you know I, I'm the guy who p picked them for the premiership. My expectations are up here. They're in a form slump badly. You know, they let the Western Bulldogs have 30 shots at goal whilst they only scored like 43 themselves. Uh, they're in a massive hole. So I think last year the Giants beat them at GMHBA. They were one of three teams to do that. And so they're not a bad GMHBA side, but on current form, I know neither of these teams are in good form, but I'm probably more concerned with the Giants' form. Maybe not long term, but for the purposes of this game, I think it is a 50-50, but gee, like the two sides are converging right now in the mother of all form slumps. And either side really doesn't want to drop this. Like Geelong going to seven and four would be bad for them. They have just lost to their last game at GMHBA and they've now lost four in about 12 months. So it's not the fortress that it once was, even though Geelong are a decent team this year. And I do think G GWS can play anywhere. Like we, they demonstrated that last year. So it's a bit of a 50-50 this one. I think I'm more, I can more clearly imagine in my mind Geelong coming good at home in front of a home crowd. But GWS, who knows? Who knows? I'm going to say the Cats. I'm going to say the Cats by 10 points. I'd say it'll be close. Dreamtime game, Richmond versus Essendon. This will be good uh, in no way. <laughs> no, I shouldn't make light of Richmond's situation. I mean, my team is barely out of that injury crisis of the last two years. But let's be real. This game, in my opinion, is unlikely to be a real spectacle. I'm sorry, Richmond fans. I'm sure they're pragmatic about whether it's like... The injury situation has hit critical mass and, you know, they lost to the Lions by 119 points after a 91-point loss the week before and I don't think it's going to get better. Now, Essendon haven't played this week as I'm recording. They're playing North Melbourne tomorrow. I'd imagine they get a W. They've put together some really good football. So when you consider the margin, though, I don't think Essendon has proven themselves to be a team that puts teams away, albeit they've been a very good team, but their percentage is... It's over 100 now because I presume they'll beat North by a decent margin. So again, I don't think this will be, you know, 100 points or anything like that. And I am empathetic to Richmond fans having to watch this right now. It must be such a weird loop to be in at the moment where you just kind of hope things don't continue to get worse and maybe they will play with spirit maybe they'll lift the occasion um and you know give Essendon a run for their money but I think a seven goal win here for Essendon is a fair guess to be honest Hawthorne versus the Lions at Marvel Stadium the Lions obviously coming off a percentage boosting win against Richmond that I just talked about and Hawthorne haven't played yet I'd imagine they go to Adelaide Oval and don't beat Port but I actually don't think it's out of the realms of possibility that they have done. And, you know, as I record this, they've won three of their last four. And I think this could be a decent game. I think the Lions are okay at Marvel. But in general, they haven't been a fantastic team. And, you know, if Hawthorne win this, you look, and they're only two points behind them on the ladder. It's hard to have trust in the Lions at the moment. It really is. So that being said, I mean, what are their last three performances? They beat the Gold Coast. They drew with the Crows in Adelaide. And then they touched up Richmond. So that... 
particularly that game, well, against the Suns first, actually. That's a pretty good win now in hindsight. And the Crows have also put it together a pretty good month and a bit. So while they're lowly on the ladder, they, I don't think their form has been horrendous, Brisbane. So maybe I'll back them in. I'll back them in, but I do think this could be close. I can't see Brisbane smashing them. And obviously, I'll be surprised if Hawthorne smash Brisbane. That would be telling. That would be very telling. So I'll say the Lions by 17 points. Melbourne versus St Kilda at the MCG. At the start of the season, I would have put this down as a game you absolutely had to watch. And St Kilda's form at the moment is, uh, is I was going to say letting me down, but it's letting their fans down. I think they're a better team than what they're demonstrating. Disappointing in a, in a low-scoring game against Fremantle. And I know there's a lot of fan frustration about the way they're playing at the moment. It's not entertaining and it's not getting the best out of their players. Now, is it a form slump or is this here to stay? They're currently three and seven. Pretty much season over in terms of finals. The Ds, on the other hand, I imagine are coming off a good win against the West Coast Eagles and in general have been a pretty damn good team this year. They can sit, well, six and three right now, seven and three presumably. Absolutely still in the, in the top four mix. I think this is a tough time to get Melbourne, to be honest. I think I think this could be particularly one-sided. Now, it'd be nice to see St Kilda shock a few people and come out and win this game, but I think I'm going to be pretty confident in saying that the Ds win this by a good 47 points. I think they have the weapons to do that, and I think St Kilda don't have the scoring power to really get close to them. I could be wrong, but I'm, I'm going pretty strong on that prediction. The Ds should win easy. Adelaide versus West Coast. Adelaide, like I said, their last six weeks have been very good. I mean, if you look at it in isolation, they've, they've beaten the Blues away. They beat the Power. They drew with the Brisbane Lions. They nearly beat Collingwood at the MCG, which is something they've done in the past. They've gotten close to beating Ad, uh, Collingwood a number of times and fall short each time. But either way, the form they're in is ominous. Now, I watched Collingwood and Adelaide today, and I noticed that Rankin, had, uh, was he pulling out his hammy at the end of the game? Hopefully, he was all right. And I have to say at the moment, like, it's really good to see a play like Rankin re-deliver on the potential. Like, he always had this potential, but now you're starting to see him do it at AFL level, what he used to do at under-18 level, and I'm, I'm here for it. Hopefully, he doesn't go large this week against West Coast if he's playing. West Coast, the form line, obviously, don't know how they went against the Demons as I record this. However, while the effort's there... From West Coast, like I think they're, they're hanging in there. Still have been touched up by a number of good teams in recent weeks. Got close to Essendon, uh, well beaten by Gold Coast, well beaten by Collingwood. And I think there's a chance this is a decent game. So out of respect for West Coast, I think I'll say 30 points is fair, whilst acknowledging Adelaide are a much better team and do have the forward line that could really put a score on the board if they get the ascendancy in the midfield. And I imagine Elliot Yo will be fit for this game, which is a big factor. So I'll say Adelaide by 30 points conservatively. So there you have it, guys. Assuming I've got, well, the last bit of round 10 right. Now with round 11 there, we have a look at the ladder. We have Carlton back into the eight. Collingwood in sixth. Geelong in fifth. The Bombers in second spot. Would you look at that? That is likely to be the case at the end of round 10, actually, uh, because the Cats lost, didn't they? Essendon with just two losses for the year. Yeah, I think that's likely, to be honest. I think they'll beat North, and then, then they go Richmond at the Dreamtime game. Like, they should win those games, right? St Kilda survive. They don't make the bottom four unless Hawthorne win one of their games against Port and Brisbane. The Bulldogs... Down in 12th. Lions up to 11th. Gold Coast in 9th. Wow, interesting looking ladder. Anyway, guys, let me know in the comments uh, what your thoughts are on this particular week. It should be an interesting round of footy. I'm going to be away. I still have a number of uploads coming out through the through the next week, and then the back end of May will be quite quiet, and then I'll be back into it for June. I've had to just compact all my trips into one area because it's cheaper. I'm a poor man blowing out a credit card at the moment, um, but I'd appreciate it if you stick with the fat with the channel. I will be back. Like I said, I've got like four or five uploads coming through on True Footy in the next eight days. Same thing with True Eagle my Eagles fan channel I've got a number of videos coming out over the course of the rest of the month but in terms of commenting on current events you know this will probably be the last little video of that nature for a little while but I have worked hard to make sure you still have some content while I'm away but as always look forward to your import guys thank you for watching thank you for being subscribed and I'll see you in the next one cheers